warrant notice. So Steve mentioned at the beginning that the way we like to break out our budgeting concepts is into the seven key concepts. So we would now be on number three. If you were looking in our basic law of budgeting book, this would be concept number three. And I think Steve has already touched upon a lot of this, but the idea here is that an appropriation is only valid if the subject matter appears in the warrant. You are warning voters. This is what we are acting upon. So it has to be in the warrant that is required by 32 section six and new purposes or new line items cannot be added from the floor of the meeting because they were not warned. Doesn't prevent amendments to warrant articles that are on the warrant, but it prevents new things that were not warned on the warrant prior to the deliberative session. Um, notice and amendments. You are an SB2 municipality, so you have heard perhaps that um, there are restrictions on the extent to which the legislative body can amend warrant articles. Um, we're going to get to that in a second, but let's just sort of the basic points here is that um, at the deliberative session, the voters can amend warrant articles from the floor. So in SB2, you're not ultimately voting to adopt articles, but you are discussing mm -hmm. and you are amending and you are finalizing the language for the ballot. That is the purpose of the deliberative session. You have, you know, voters have the ability, of course, they're going to discuss and deliberate the separate warrant articles. Each one is going to be taken up for discussion. Um, when it comes to the operating budget, of course, that shows up on the warrant as an article that reflects the bottom line budget. But of course, posted is also the DRA budget form, which breaks out that bottom line budget further into the DRA line item appropriation purposes. So voters do have the ability to take the budget so-called line by line. Um, this is perhaps effective if obviously if this is what the voters want to do if they're the legislative body they control um, to a certain extent their deliberative session but keep in mind that even if the voters took the budget line by line they wanted to vote on each line item in the DRA budget an amendment to a single line item say they wanted to decrease one line item by twenty thousand dollars I think that you all know that that would actually be an amendment to the bottom line budget right. and it wouldn't be an amendment to that particular line item. You would still have a bottom line figure. It would now be decreased by $20,000. The selectmen retain the authority to transfer between line items in the budget anyway, so they could try to make up the difference in the cut in the bottom line budget. As you know, you're the budget committee. It's your proposed budget that goes to the voters, but it is just that. It's a proposed budget, and they're the ones who adopt it and potentially make amendments to it um, before it goes on the ballot and before it is ultimately voted on, um, subject, of course, to the 10% rule. So notice and um, amendments, sort of a few more words on this. Um, one of the things that can happen with amendments is that you can, that the voters can make changes that may sort of run afoul of the requirement for mm -hmm. warrant notice. So, you know, doing things like altering the mode of funding. So let's say you have uh, the Ford uh, F-350 truck and the way that it's set out in um, the warrant article um, is certain funding sources, but the voters want to make an amendment to change the funding sources slightly. That's usually okay. Okay, but keep in mind that if it changes it significantly, you could have a failure to change because the warrant article subject matter has been changed so significantly. So an appropriation to a capital reserve fund um, would be something that would need to be warned and couldn't come out as an amendment on the floor of the deliberative session for the first time. Another example might be an amendment to add a agents to expend to a capital reserve fund. So let's say there's an article on the warrant to establish a capital reserve fund, but the way that the article appeared on the warrant, it did not say anything about agents to expend. If the voters tried to add agents to expend to the article on the floor of the deliberative session, that would be invalid because it wasn't warned. And that really is a very substantial change because when you have a capital reserve fund that has agents to expend, then those agents, typically the selectmen, have the ability to spend from that capital reserve fund without going back to the voters for legislative approval. On the other hand, if there are no agents to expend, expenditures from the CRF would have to be done by a legislative body vote. So that is an extremely substantial change to the warrant article. 
We normally talk about the notice requirements as the so-called stay-at-home test. So you need to warn people sufficiently of the subject matter. So if they were interested in that subject matter, the warrant would let them know that they should come out and hear it and deliberate and discuss it. But you know, you, the idea is that if it's changed so substantially that someone would have come out if it had been warned, if it had been included on the warrant, that you are in violation of the stay-at-home rule. So that's sort of the colloquial way of saying that you need to give warrant notice. So in traditional town meetings, you know, or you may know, especially um, if you remember uh, traditional town meeting days, that voters can do a lot of different things at the town meeting. And one of those things is that they can table or pass over warrant articles entirely. So we don't like this article. We don't want to act on it. We don't want to vote yes or no. Either way, we're going to table it. No action other than that is going to be taken. You know that as an SB2 municipality, every article on the warrant is going on to the ballot. All you're doing at the deliberative session is finalizing the language that's going to show up on the ballot. So you can't pass over or table articles at the deliberative session. The voters can't move to strike them so that they don't show up on the ballot. And voters also can't, and voters have tried this, and there was a Supreme Court case uh, ruling that you can't do this. Voters have tried, well, okay, we can't pass over it, we can't delete it. What if we just take all the words after the words to see, um, delete them, and then all that shows up on the ballot are the words to see. No, that is in effect deleting or passing over um, a warrant article that has to show up on the ballot. Um, with regard to the requirement that voters can amend but can't eliminate the subject matter, that's the standard. So when we talk about, well, what's the big difference between traditional and, um, and, and SB2, what you see in RSA 40, Section 13, is that the voters can't eliminate the subject matter of the article although they can freely amend dollar amounts just like in a traditional town meeting. Just by way of sort of an example, there was a superior court case this year, this year, in, in 2016, I believe, where the voters in an SB2 municipality had amended this Warren article. The article, I believe, was a petitioned article, and the article's content, its original content, was to take the police chief and the welfare officer positions to make them elected and then to give them a set salary. That was the way the petitioned article looked when it went on the warrant. At the SB2 deliberative session, the voters substantially amended it. They amended it to say that this is an advisory article that the voters would like to continue to have these positions be appointed. And any reference to the annual salaries of these officials was struck out of the article entirely. A voter who was displeased with this result brought a lawsuit against the town. And the court said that this kind of amendment was okay. Mm -hmm. The original intent of the warrant article was preserved. It was about the police chief and the welfare officer and their positions in the municipality and the status of their positions. And even though there was a substantial change, it was still okay. The amendment was still valid. So that kind of gives you an idea that yes, there are restrictions, but for at least for the purposes of eliminating the subject matter, as long as the basic intent is preserved by the amendment, mm -hmm. the amendment is probably okay. 